Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Shadowlands, and we are going to look at the Divine Paladin, baby. It's kind of okay. We should heal some people here. Let's heal our healer so he can relax. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I'll heal myself now. <laughs> I think maybe that was a little bit too intense for those guys. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Shadowlands, where I am taking the opportunity as much as humanly possible to play the classes that are exciting and fun and all that good stuff. And what better way to start than with the prop pally? I know many of you had questions as to why the pally maybe didn't appear on that top list uh, when I went over the classes that I'm most excited about after trying out the first zone. Uh, we have had another zone now, which is so extremely good and came with a whole wealth of new Covenant abilities. Yet, the unfortunate side effect is, for now, Blizzard have disabled, or not managed to get working, the use of those Covenant abilities in a dungeon. So if I want to show you some cool Covenant stuff, uh, we're going to have to drop into this dungeon here, which has been a real pain to get in, unfortunately. Uh, not many people doing this area now. Especially considering if you make a new Revendreth character... Uh, you get no Covenant ability here whatsoever. But I think it's a good opportunity to show off this dungeon, have some fun, and also show off just how good this is. I think Frag's in here. <laughs> if I'm uh, sure who Mr. Lanquist is. Let's see if we can pull these while we can. Yeah, let's do this guy. Uh, I'm looking at a man, Mr. Lankvist, uh, to be doing this, but... Um, the Covenant abilities are going to become a hot topic very soon. That is guaranteed. And a lot of the discussion comes down to uh, various things. Like, how look, there's a big heal. I just want to point out, some people thought prop pallies couldn't heal anymore. I'm not sure where that came from. They absolutely can. Uh, that is not a problem for the prop pally whatsoever. But the as we're getting more and more of them, it's becoming clear that thematically, it's... It's an issue of which one's better to press. Uh, what I've seen is a, <laughs> it's a lot of people uh, kind of just... Just dispel myself. Make sure we heal everybody up. And keep away from the boss. Interrupt this. A lot of little focus here as we deal with this. Chains of Ice. Oh yeah, he's probably got the uh, the talent. That's cool. Um, bossy. Bossy. Is that it's become very apparent. The Paladin is such a wonderful example of this. Uh, that the, the Covenant abilities are pretty distinct. And some of them are just so obviously better than others. <laughs> That it's becoming weird. So the prop pile one I'm going to show you in a second. It was one I've talked about a lot. Some of you have probably seen some animations. But I'm going to try and do some more, say, cinematic versions. Of that. So you get a better idea of what's happening. Don't die, dude. Let me bop that guy. Oh, shit. This is grim. This is really bad. Let's put Guardian of the Ancient Kings up. I've already used Bop. Can't hodge that guy. That's unfortunate. Lay on hands. Ardent Defender. Heal myself here. Try and get a hodge on that. Ugh. Kill the boss! Execute! Hopefully this doesn't bug out on us. Try and grab all these. Whew. Uh, I'm pretty amazed we actually did that. That should have been a wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a wipe. So getting back on top of then. Um, now we have a choice of current abilities. We are preparing a video where we're going to be going over um, 
we are absolutely going to be going over the I better loot that the comparison between the Revendreth and Covenant abilities, and of course the ones from the Kyrians. Uh, now we have two, and what we're seeing is some of them are distinctly just better. Like there's no way of getting around it. So if you're not sure what the Paladin was, it throws out at least for Prot, it throws out five divine shields, five divine shields that ricochet and reflect to do all those kind of things. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the actual third boss in here is going to be so awesome uh, to demonstrate that. So stay tuned, I guess. Stay tuned for that. We're going to be there in a minute or so. Um, whereas the Kiri the, the, the Revendreth one drops a giant death and decay. And that sounds probably pretty awesome, right? It drops a giant death and decay. Watch this. <laughs> All right. So you can do that every one minute. You can do that. Every, every one minute you can do that. Now, that's amazing. Not only, and this is the important thing, this is so crucial, because I've had this conversation over and over, especially with players who are like, eh, it's not going to be that big of a deal, is that the damage it does doesn't matter. Like, the damage doesn't matter. Why is that ability so cool? Not only does it feel awesome to press, right? Throwing all those shields feels freaking awesome, right? It feels absolutely awesome. That is undeniably the case, right? In, in my eyes. It's undeniably the case. It feels awesome. But it also silences and controls the enemy, right? It also does that on top of it. Heal ourselves. Okay, good. The message got across. Jimmy, I think if, if that is Jimmy, I assume it is. Uh, <laughs> I assume it is. Was getting a little impatient. You made me wait a second for DPS. How dare you! All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. So it does a giant death and decay. Ugh. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> a giant death and decay uh which sounds cool it's not right it does a little bit of damage a little bit of healing and uh the problem with that is it's on a four minute cooldown right for comparison it's on a four minute cooldown Which makes it massively impractical comparatively. It's also doing divided damage and healing, right? So it does this huge death and decay. I'll put a picture on it now because I'm just tanking these mobs. Um, and um, it's it doesn't do anything utility-wise, like a bit of a healing. I mean, okay, not bad, I suppose, but it's divided amongst the people you put it in. So in a raid environment, it's certainly considerably more terrible. Uh, than you would want to use practically. And is it going to do enough to warrant a four-minute cooldown despite the fact it lacks all the proper utility and usefulness that this one does? Like, you get me? If It's a bizarre choice. It's a super bizarre choice. God, that Billy feels so good! Because, remember, you're supposed to be locked into these things. Because you might say, yeah, but Preacher, I get what you're saying, right? I get what you're saying. Devil's Advocate, I get what you're saying. But the thing is this. You're only going to use one of those things. Um, you're only going to use the Divine Tolls not great for, like, a raid boss, right? True. Like, single target, yeah. But remember, you're committed to these things for the remainder of every environment you want to play it, right? Uh, you're committed to these for, like, the majority of the expansion. So, I'm not bitching on the system, by the way. I'm just trying to explain the side-by-side -side effect. Is, is, it feels already. Like, if they make the damage the same, that's, like, fine or whatever. Like, no problem. But, ultimately, it comes down to practicality. And the practicality doesn't seem to be there. Oh, 
Well, that needs to play a little bit well here. This uh, pack gets particularly annoying. Because this entire thing, let's fire off five sh Oh no, we've got Avenger Shield procs. So I want to show you something now. This is the third boss I was alluding to earlier. So it, it wants a four minute cooldown that does some divided damage and healing. It's usefulness open world, non-existent. It's usefulness in dungeon, practically non-existent. It's usefulness on a raid boss, maybe sometimes when you want to put out some damage and healing. Let's assume for now it puts out tremendous damage, right? Uh, let's assume it does that, that's cool. Now, Divide Soul, useful on a single target boss? Not particularly. Useful literally everywhere else in the entire game? Yeah. <laughs> right? Even if it did zero damage, and this is my point, when a lot of people are comparing it to like, well, we'll just make the damage the same. Isn't that what balances? Uh, no, that's not what balances. It needs to be balanced in all kinds. Now, watch this. Just look at what I just did, right? Oh, and that's a real shame, because that guy just kind of scuffed us, but... Just look what I just did. How awesome was it pressing that button for a start? Pretty goddamn good. It only pulled every single mob on top of us. But it controlled the pack, brought them into itself, and made the, the whole fight significantly better DPS-wise, and on top of being fun to play. So this is a very good ability. Let's say that, right? Which is fair. Not all the abilities are going to be awesome. But the fact of the matter is, like, they're so much better. <laughs> and I mean that. They're so much better that the choice feels like if you went the other way, you're basically being an idiot, right? Let's heal our friend there. It's got to blow these up in a second. There we go. Do you get what I'm saying? doesn't matter if the damage is better on another one like uh, in terms of pressing it what it does it could, like I, said, I would take divine toll right now as a paladin even if it didn't do damage like the fact that it does damage is uh, like an afterthought it doesn't matter it's a being able to do what we just saw it's being able to do all that stuff and being able to translate that into raid trash mythic plus open world all these different environments where it can make all those things happen every single time and then you put it side by side with the other one. You're like, why would you ever take that? But if you were a paladin, you love Revendreth. Damn, you're going to feel real bad. Like, unquestionably, you're going to feel pretty grim about the situation. And that's going to suck. Like, it's going to suck real bad. <laughs> it's going to suck really, really bad uh, for those guys. And I don't want it to feel bad. I want it to feel good. Right? So hopefully something Blizzard's going to work on over the next little while here is to try and give uh, some utility to them. Maybe it silences. Maybe it causes obscure effects on your character. Something we see. This is what I'm saying. I'm not bitching about the system. Possible solutions are they need to get the utility right. It needs to feel good to press. If you're going to be a four minute cooldown, dude, it better be poggers. It better be absolutely awesome. Uh, but it, it's really not. <laughs> like, as soon as I got it on my Paladin when I was testing Revendreth, I was like, yeah! <laughs> Ooh, not sure about this one. <laughs> really not sure about this one. I think we could do a little bit of work here. A little bit of work would be nice. To get it done. As we're, we are actually coming to the end of this dungeon. I haven't really talked about this dungeon yet. I'm going to do a little individual video on it. Because it's undergoing a lot of change. Uh, if we're going to heal. We better heal that group. It's undergoing a lot of change. This one's super buggy. We might actually, actually have some problems coming up with the last boss. Um, but this next boss is kind of fun. Let me take you through some of the tanking stuff happening here. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is fight, fighting Surgeon Stitch Flesh. You can see he's located over there on the platform doing his stuff. Um, yep, he activated. Good. And the cool thing about this is that it's very much a tank control fight. So what's going to happen, and if there's new people here, some invites just went out for Alpha. So uh, do not check your goddamn emails, for the love of God. They don't give it to you that way. <laughs> That's not, not how it happens. interesting grip uh sure about that <laughs> interesting grip but uh yeah <laughs> i don't know really what the game plan was there sure 
There should be some ads here. Uh oh. Did they disable the ads? This is why I haven't done a video yet. They may have disabled the extra ads that come here. Maybe just to reduce the trash count. There should have been three ads with this enemy. And there was yesterday. Uh, let's, let's... There we go. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Welcome to my... One thing I've noticed about my prop pally gameplay is I don't use wings offensively enough. And I should. <laughs> I should do, absolutely do that. You can probably tell that... Uh, be a little careful here because of this effect. Standing in that goo, not good. As our DK just showed. <laughs> Do not stand in the goo. Avoid the goo as much as possible. Heal self wherever possible. <laughs> Hammer of Wrath. Hammer of Wrath, for good sake. Alright, so... DK's back up. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do a little bit of control here. So we're going to pull this. Now, let, we're instantly going to see where this is good. Now, we're going to position this ad here. Without this table being in the way. Because in the early version of this dungeon, this table was a big problem. We're going to watch the floor for goo spawning. We have quite a lot of people in melee. So, there's the melee. Right, okay, so you can see he's aiming this arrow at the boss. There's the boss. So we're going to pop wings. We're going to try and get the boss out of the goo. Now I'm going to pull him over to the side. Because what you're going to notice is he's going to continually spawn goo. And what we want is that goo not, absolutely not, to be in the middle of the room. You see, like that? We want it off to the side like this. Please don't die. Come on, bro. That makes things a little difficult, but now we're going to fight him on the edge like this. So we're trying to keep the goo away from the middle of the room. So he's going to disappear now, and we're going to get another guy. I don't think we've got a combat risk for our DK, because that's the second time he's died. Yeah, we don't want goo in the middle, but we want to keep the boss close, uh, the ad relatively close. Because the range on this meat hook, you can see it's got a slightly opaque arrow, then it goes full red. That's when it's actually going to fire. And it didn't hit. So, mm, I'm going to move it a little bit back here. It may have hit the table just a touch. Let's try it here. That's fine. Move into here. Uh, we're in Trank. I'm not sure if Trank actually does any healing. So, I'll heal myself. Right, there's the boss. Good. All right, let's try and pull him out of the middle. And we do this because any missed hooks on this fight really start causing big problems. Like, genuinely cause huge problems. And we, um, what you can have happen is very quickly this will lead to a wipe. And it's purely going to be a wipe because the pools filled the area. And the meat hook doesn't have an infinite range across the room. So you just have no way of actually, you have no way of reaching the boss. Because the hook seemingly hits the a table, it hits the potion table, all that kind of things. <clears throat> Alright, let's go. Last boss. So in conclusion here, what I wanted to say is that so, so far the Covenant ability has been class defining. One of the reasons I've enjoyed the Prop Paladin so much is because of Divine Toll and the fun it has given me. Uh, yep. Let's free uh... Oh, I'm going to have to heal myself a little bit here. Heal this Comet Storm. Let's move around. Please don't die. We can't fall man this boss. Do not die. Let me heal. Let me heal you. Let me heal you, friend. I'll pop out and defend the nice and heal you. Oh, we lost Jimmy. No, come back. <laughs> 
I can't cast freedom on all those people. So the idea of this boss, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's relatively simple. Is somebody will get frozen. Um, now, when they're dispelled, it freezes everybody around them. Uh, this Comet Storm is pretty much a one-shot. Okay, we're not killing this. Uh, maybe. We have gotten pretty low, so we might get lucky here. So the Comet Storm is pretty much a one-shot. You need to be super careful. I'm going to lay on hands myself here. We have to focus a little bit here. Heal myself. Woo! Guardian. Oh, I haven't got one look. Wings. Oof. Oh, this is getting spicy. Heal the healer. <laughs> to heal myself here friends sorry about that we are focusing team this is not happening i don't think we need like i just gotta keep healing myself we got guardian back for when we panic this is a uh, full focus mode here keep healing myself Storm. Heal myself to fall. Badly timed heal. I should be punished for that. Heal myself. I think at this point, just healing myself is the way to go. Oh. Yeah, let's pop Guardian. I think that's it. Wait, wait, wait. Make sure you have projected textures on. Uh, so I did predict earlier in the video... Uh, I did mention earlier in the video this might be a wipe. And the reason for that is actually pretty simple. Um, the, um, the way this fight actually works, um, is that, oh, this dungeon, I should, let me be clear on this. So this dungeon is notoriously buggy, causes all kinds of problems. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. I was just talking to Jimmy about the new Shatter. New Shatter throw is awesome, by the way, because instead of it just waiting for immunities uh, or being a raid debuff, anything that puts an absorb shield on, uh, it just does 400% damage. It's bling. And this boss puts absorb shields on. That's why I was just mentioning it uh, to Jimmy. The um, This dungeon is notoriously buggy. It causes loads of crashes. And the way you get around the crashes in Shadowlands right now, for the most part, is actually turning your graphics down to 1 to log back in. Otherwise, your character insta DCs all the time. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's four. We've tied around with it, but one is always safe. The problem is you kind of forget and leave your graphics at one, um, and that doesn't have projected textures. It's like the normal fix is just turn your graphics down to one, and you'll instantly get straight back in. Every time I do this dungeon now, because there are places your characters just get perma stuck, it isn't alpha after all. Um, does leave people with still on one and then they get to this boss and they forget that comet storm needs projected textures and they can't see it and they just insta die uh so that happens all the time it's very very cool it's very very awesome so let's try again now this fight but because of that absorb shield i was actually talking to jimmy about this is kind of the problem with the um with this boss is this absorb shield because there's always always at least one person 
off off the platform so you're kind of four manning it and for a big portion of the fight actually two people will be off the platform dealing with the valkyr gauntlet that you can't break the absorb shield so even though the boss health seems relatively low you simply can't seemingly get anywhere uh, and that really sucks There it is. So looking for a gap is always nice. Like run out of melee if needs be. Like no problem. It's nice if you can get everybody staying in melee DPS, but this I mean, <laughs> is it worth it? Probably not. That's nice. Frozen binds went on the healer. Good. Means we don't have to worry. Who's this? My DK is to the left. I really don't want to go off to the right here with Comet Storm, but it's fine. I'll just, I'll keep out of the way of the deep melee. Let me pull this back to the middle. So you can see his boss, the pro, as long as everyone stays alive, this boss is remarkably easy. A little bit of tricky once you to get this another mechanic. You can, uh, on the platform, by the way, I don't know if you've seen it. We put it in lots of videos, though, at this point. Uh, is you'll actually see... Oh, don't die, Jimmy. <laughs> Executes coming. We want you alive. <laughs> Let's pop wings. We're going in for the kill, team. We're going in for the kill. Actually, a very, very good dungeon, this. I have very little to complain about at all. There's, uh, and they're changing it regularly. So uh, once, once I'm confident that this is the final version, we'll definitely do a more specific video on this. Well, there she blows. Absolutely tremendous. The Paladin flavor all there. So cool. So cool, cool. <laughs> Jimmy got the two-hander. All right, uh, I'm going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more... Uh, if you want to see other classes in the CDP while we're waiting for more Torghast without sneaking in, let me know. Bye-bye.